Oh, how awful it is to be an atheist. No hope, no purpose, just a bleak, meaningless existence. Stay tuned to find out why that's honorable and why it wouldn't even matter if it wasn't. When I was a kid, I would clean this lady's house for a little extra cash. She was a neighbor and a member of the church I attended. This went on from when I was about 12 up until I was about 18. Working for this woman helped me out a lot. My family wasn't the wealthiest and we'd sometimes use the money that I got from helping this woman to buy food and other necessities. I am forever grateful to this woman for employing me in this way and helping out my family so much. My using this story as an example is in no way meant to diminish what this woman has done for me. In any case, we had some interesting conversations. She always liked to try and teach me little lessons. One day she told me about an experiment that her son was involved with when he was a teenager. Apparently he was allergic to peanuts and this experiment was supposed to make the kids not allergic to nuts anymore. But they screwed something up pretty badly and unfortunately one of the other kids died. Her son had befriended this kid over the course of the experiment, so naturally they went to the funeral. Apparently the family wasn't religious at all, and the lady I worked for described the funeral as being hopeless. She really wanted to teach me that there's no hope in atheism. Why is it that people like this think that there can't be any hope in atheism? It seems to me that these kinds of people see hope in an afterlife as the biggest, most significant kind of hope a person can have. Tell me if you think I'm wrong, because I'm not trying to straw man here. This is based off of what I remember from being a Christian and from the Christians around me at the time. Anyways, if you lack that giant significant hope, all the things that you do hope for, maybe even all the things that you manage to accomplish, seem less significant. What's the point if you're just gonna die, right? If you lose everything when you die, why bother accomplishing anything? That's a bit of a dramatic way to say it, but it's a sentiment I think a lot of people believe to some extent or another. Well, where's the hope then? If we believe that there's nothing after death, then where's the hope in atheism? For starters, you don't necessarily have to lack a belief in an afterlife to lack a belief in a god or gods. You can still believe in other paranormal things like ghosts and such and still be an atheist. Although from my experience, it does seem that most atheists don't believe in any sort of an afterlife and I'm one of them, so let's go with that. I still have hope. I have hope for a good life for myself and for those around me. I have hope that I'll finish school and get a good job with my degree. I hope that I can be a foster parent someday. I hope that we can build a better world for the kids I'll be fostering and for all future generations. I hope for improvement, less homophobia, less transphobia, racism and sexism, less gun violence and hatred and better education. I have hope for humanity and for my own life and that is plenty enough to keep me going. The difference is just that my hope is for things of this life. Things that I can see now and that I know I can do something about. So I can hope that we will someday live in a world without transphobia, but I can also help do something about it. I can call it out when I see it and try to help explain to people why it's so wrong. I can hope to get through school, but I can also work hard on my assignments and study a lot. My hope isn't any less significant just because it's in things of this life. It is just as meaningful to me as somebody else's hope in an afterlife is to them. Yes, I believe that my life on this earth is the only one that I've got, but that doesn't make it any less important than the life of a Christian who believes that they're going to live on in heaven after they die. Don't get me wrong, I'm not exactly thrilled that my life has to end someday. I like living and I'm kind of pissed that I only get to do it for another 50, 60 years if I'm lucky. But that doesn't change the truth of the matter and it doesn't make my hope for this lifetime any less significant. Now I mentioned at the start of this that even if it was the case that there's no hope in atheism, that it wouldn't matter. I guess to some extent it would matter. It would matter to me if myself and all my atheist friends were living some meaningless, hopeless lives. It would matter to me if we had a bleak existence. Because of course I care about the happiness and well-being of myself and others. I want people to be happy. But I didn't become an atheist in search of hope, happiness, or lack thereof. I didn't become an atheist just so I could sin without guilt or to spite God. I became an atheist when it started making the most sense. I believe it to be the case that there is no God. And you know what? It says almost nothing about me that I'm an atheist. There's so much more to me than that. I'm a student and a psychology major. I'm a vegan and a YouTuber. I'm Connor's romantic partner. I'm 
a sibling in my parents' child. I love Oreos in my pets, in Minecraft, in my friends. I hate bigotry and child abuse and slut shaming and animal cruelty. All of these things say more about me than the mere fact that I'm an atheist. The fact that I don't believe in a god or gods doesn't really change anything in my life. The fact that I'm a humanist does. The fact that I see harm in a lot of religious practices and want to speak out about it, that says a lot about me. But the mere lack of a belief in a god or gods does hardly anything to my day-to-day life. Just less religious rituals, I guess. That's probably it. Even if it was the case that atheism was less hopeful than theism, that wouldn't change my mind. Because hope has nothing to do with truth. I could read this book and spend the entire time hoping that young Anne gets to go on and live a full and happy life after the war. It would certainly be a more pleasant ending. I wish that could have been the case. But that doesn't change the horrific reality of what actually happened to her. I can't just choose to believe that Anne was okay because it's more pleasant. In that same way, I can't just choose to believe in an afterlife just because it might be more pleasant than death being the end. If I did trick myself into that belief, it wouldn't change the reality of it. A person's beliefs don't change their reality in this way. Of course, I could be wrong. There could be an afterlife and I could end up living eternally as a ghost or in heaven or hell or purgatory. In that case, my lack of a belief wouldn't change the reality either. Sure, there are times when a person's beliefs can shape their reality, like in the case of self-fulfilling prophecies. If you truly believe that you're going to fail your class, you're probably going to end up failing that class. Or in cases where people really think they're sick and they start exhibiting symptoms that they would have with whatever sickness that they think they have. But in the case of a god or an afterlife, our belief or lack thereof isn't going to change the reality of it. So what's more or less pleasant doesn't matter for the truth of it. Only what's more or less likely to be true matters. All right, class, so what did we learn today? One, atheism is not equal to hopelessness. Two, hope or lack thereof doesn't make something any more or less true. So what matters to you? Hope, truth, a good life, some combination of those, something else entirely? I want truth and I want a good life. I believe that I can accomplish those things as an atheist and I think that you can too. Thanks for watching guys. Extra special thank you to my patrons who are listed right here. Extra, extra special thank you to my top tier spooky bitch patrons, Phelan and Aided Furball. You can become a patron with the link in the description. Like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, stay unholy, my friends.